This video is going to be a commentary about the Ravens officially hiring Zach Orr uh, to be their defensive coordinator in 2024 and beyond. Additionally, it's going to be my attempt to hopefully respectfully illustrate some interesting parallels or similarities between this naming of Zach Orr as defensive coordinator at 31 years old and his first professional football career, which obviously was with the Ravens as a player from 2024 to 2016. We all have, as Ravens fans, experienced a swirling set of emotions in the last six or seven days. First, you have a potential Super Bowl bid wiped away by a dismal offensive performance. Then the hirings of Denar Wilson, Mike McDonald, and now presumably Anthony Weaver, as I record this early Saturday morning. When you add in the potential departures of super talented young players that came through the system, primarily Patrick Queen and uh, perhaps Justin Matabike, although I think it's obvious they're going to do what they can to retain him. It's a tumultuous week. And I don't know about you, but it almost reminds me of like a movie ending where you know what it's going to be. Perhaps you've seen the movie before or friends have told you. Nonetheless, you sit there and watch, even though you really don't want to. The only good news, I guess two, besides Zor, Zach Orr being named the new DC at 31, is the Orioles officially being you know, sold, if you're a Baltimore area fan, that is. If you're only a football fan, uh, this looks like one piece of good news among an exodus. I think as old Walter in our Ravens Discord said it best, he said this looks like an exodus. And when you have so many talented and experienced coaches leaving after a very disappointing loss, one that was unusual from a strategic standpoint, it's natural that people would try to encapsulate this as something that it isn't. I can't speculate on those things right now for myself. I choose to focus on the story of Zach Orr. Uh, he's a prime example, if you ask me, of staying focused on what you want. If you're not aware, his father was an NFL football player, and all of his brothers, I think, played college football at a high level. Uh, in fact, I think one of them played in the Canadian Football League. And uh, he didn't give up on his goals, dreams, if you will, despite evidence or what people may have uh, recommended. If, and what I mean is, if, if you don't know, he was a in 2016, he was a phenom. Uh, I remember that season. I remember watching him play next to Mosley. And they both made All-Pro second team at inside linebacker. For Orr, he was 24. And then just as fast as he had that success, his career was over, so he was told. He did try to get back on a roster. I think he visited nine or ten teams, in fact, in June of that next year to try to get back onto a roster, get an opportunity. But as a result of that medical diagnosis, he uh, no one would sign him. Uh, and the Ravens let his had, after the Ravens had let his contract run out. Now in this situation where we are now, despite the loss to the Chiefs, and I guess Exodus is the right word of the defensive staff. To me, it's a remarkable story for Orr. Um, he only left the Ravens organization after uh, one season to go coach, ironically, uh, down in Jacksonville with Urban Meyer in 2021 as the outside linebackers coach. Brought back here to the Ravens organization to coach inside linebackers the last two years, and which, if you don't know, was Mike McDonald's position as a position coach prior to that, and help McDonald craft what I think, and I think everyone recognizes, a truly unique system and a group of guys who play fast and unselfish. Now, the way Patrick Queen exploded in the last two years, 2022, 2023, we can't attribute all of that to Zach Orr and Mike McDonald. Some of it is Patrick Queen. I think, um, look, I plan on a larger film study on Queen for next week, but I, I think it's pretty clear that he's gone, um, and you can't blame him. The guy's going to get paid, and um, you only get one opportunity, sometimes two, to do that if you're a professional football player. The thing I'll remember about Queen the most, and the thing I want to mention in terms of or is unselfishness. Uh, as fast, athletic, and physical as Queen is, his unselfishness while being so talented is what I – think is most remarkable for it's an incredible attribute to add to his physical gifts and also it's unfortunately what some other organizations are going to see on film and then that'll be the the final nail for them in their decision to, to offer him a lot of money That's in the case of Patrick Queen, you can see the unselfishness on film with some of the things he does, taking on blocks, picks to uh, clear out space or lanes for guys to rush the passer. But that's also the case with Orr at, as a coach. Because apparently last week he was offered the Packers defensive coordinator job, which to me is interesting and, and had to be alluring given how Green Bay ascended late in 2023 
and then nearly beat the 49ers in the NFC Divisional Round, which could have totally changed the landscape uh, for the Super Bowl. Nonetheless, Orr chose to come back to Baltimore, and he's now the new Ravens D.C., only the ninth in the franchise's still young history. <clears throat> now, I don't know about you, but for him to be in a room or in charge of a defense, I should say, that was once led by guys like Marvin Lewis, Rex Ryan, uh, Chuck Pagano, Dean Pease, and then Wink, and then finally McDonald, that's an amazing accomplishment at 31 years old. Now, he has been involved in NFL coaching circles. Well, really, the Ravens realm for, for six years. And like I said, that, that one-year stop in Jacksonville is, you know, adds up to seven years coaching experience. And with so many guys leaving in the last four or five days, it wouldn't have been surprising if Zach Orr did as well. Um, at this point, Weaver hasn't officially been named the, the D.C. in Miami as I record this. He's still listed on the Ravens' website as a defensive line coach, but so is Denar Wilson for that matter. Um, Orr has a lot to do. <laughs> no matter whether Weaver and or Chuck Smith, who I think we have to retain, whether they return or not. He's got to put together a staff, find out who's leaving first, and then put together a staff. At the same time, scout for the draft, uh, visit prospects, put together a schedule for off-season workouts, and then OTAs that usually begin in late May. Now, it's February. It's February 3rd as I record this, so that sounds really far off, but it's not. It's not at all. With all the things he's got to juggle, uh, he's got his work cut out for him, and I'm sure he's already in the office working. I, um, I think you can see hear the passion that he has when you've seen clips of him coaching. And I will tell you on a personal level, I can relate to not anywhere near that, that level, clearly, but having coached and taught as a teacher in a place where I grew up, it was more than just a coaching job. It was who you were, and it was who you wanted other people behind you to be. And I suspect that Zach Orr has a very personal connection to the Ravens organization, and that's part of the reason why he's the one guy who apparently isn't leaving. And no disrespect or shade uh, intended towards other guys, because if you get the chance to be a head coach or a defensive coordinator and that's what you want to do, you go and do it. Uh, but this, to me, is more than just a coaching job for Orr. I suspect that, well, he's still got to look at what the Chiefs did to us last Sunday. We're only talking about six days ago to try to back map what we could have done better, because bottom line, for me at least, and I know some of you disagree, <clears throat> for all of our achievements – and accolades on defense in 2023, the fact remains, in the biggest game at home, we got run over on the first two opening possessions. So there's still some work to do there, along with other the, the other things that I mentioned. In my opinion, Orr um, has a huge challenge, stepping into that void of what is another very humbling loss to the Ravens. I wonder, perhaps you'll offer some reaction to this, if this one almost cuts deeper than the 2019 loss. I think it does because we knew that this was a Super Bowl caliber group, and the rest of the league did too. 2019, we were a little unsure. We were still new to the game at that moment in terms of Lamar um, and some of the defensive personnel that we had at that point. The waters just got too deep for whatever reason in 2019. The water wasn't too deep for the 2023 Ravens team. And I think the rest of the NFL gobbling up our defensive coaches less than a week after that loss is just confirmation of what that Ravens defense did. Um, <clears throat> all of the coaches are gone uh, on the defensive listing on the website, except for Chuck Smith and Chris Hewitt and now Zach Orr. As of Saturday morning when we record this, like I said, Weaver and Denar Wilson are still listed there, even though we know that one of them is definitely gone and the other one is pretty much out the door. Personally, I just hope that Orr, um, and I pray for Orr that he can that he takes the same approach to the job that he had for the Ravens organization when he came here, 2024 to 2016. He was an undrafted guy out of North Texas, even though, interestingly, his dad was an NFL tight end who won a Super Bowl right down the road in Washington. I think that's just who Zach Orr is. Whether he was undrafted or drafted in the third round, whether he coached for six years or coached for 16, I suspect he's the kind of guy that is going to attack the position uh, with passion that most of us would not recognize except for the one or two things in our individual lives that we care about the most. I think um, on a Saturday, for me at least, I woke up probably like 4.15 this morning thinking about or being signed and the symmetry to this, and I'll try to um, sum it up for you. 
all of us as Ravens fans have taken a lot of hits in the last six days, and you're going to continue to do so. People are going to talk about Lamar on social media. People are going to talk about um, us complaining about the Chiefs win. So, and we're bracing for one more official hit with Weaver being uh, named Miami's defensive coordinator. At the same time, however, we've got to be happy for a guy like Orr. And think of his emotions from 2016 to 2017. And here's what I mean. The last game of the regular season, 2016, when he's named second team All-Pro, he's put on the um, injury reserve, I believe, after a collision the week before. Then he gets named All-Pro. But based on what I looked up, he was named All-Pro on January 9th, 2017. Probably on the 8th, he had a good idea, as my guess. Someone, his agent may have told him. 11 days later, as a 24-year-old dude, he has to announce his retirement. Just as his professional playing career was beginning to thrive after being an undrafted guy, I think that is an amazing turnaround for him. And I think the comparison somewhat disrespectful when I'm talking about Orr's physical health versus you know, for a shocking diagnosis at the time versus our feelings and our pride as Ravens fans, I can't help but notice the parallels to what's transpired in the last six or seven days here in Baltimore in 2024 as a Super Bowl team is was a Super Bowl winning bid was short-circuited, and then a defensive coaching staff is, is pretty much lost except for Zach Orr. I don't know what your thoughts are in that matter, but the similarities or parallels there I thought were kind of obvious or at least worth discussing, and I wasn't sure if other people had brought them up. Appreciate you guys' time, and if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this, obviously, commentary look at Zach Orr being named the youngest defensive coordinator in Ravens football history, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media so other Ravens fans can enjoy this as well.